So this is our switch mode power supply for the DVD player. Now the uh, switch mode power supply operates at a high frequency. Linear power supplies operate at, a, at lower frequencies. Uh, the key differences are that switch mode power supplies tend to be smaller in form factor. They produce more electromagnetic interference so they have to have a lot more filtering. Um, but they also operate with uh, much more efficiency. They can change the amount of power they supply and they uh, therefore are able to, they don't use near as much power as a linear power supply. So those are the, the main differences there. Now if you look right here you can see this is where the power comes in from the house. Uh, there's a fuse here and this fuse is to protect the house uh, from any failure on the board. So if there's a failure the fuse will, will fail. This safety capacitor is also designed to fail in the case of a short, and uh, therefore it's made out of a. It's heavily. It's you know. It's got all these markings on it for regulation, and it's it's basically meant to uh, to fail if there's a short on the board and protect the uh, the house again if there's a if there's a problem. Uh, the the uh, induction coils here and this capacitor here are meant for. Uh, they're basically used to filter out uh, noise from the uh, the uh, power supply. So the power supply, since it operates at a high frequency, produces noise and these these c prevent the noise from going back through to the house and causing other problems in the line. Um, now if you look here you can see these four uh, diodes. Diodes prevent uh, current flow in one direction so they they act like an, an electrical valve. So the four diodes are uh, set up there to act as a bridge rectifier and they take the current that comes in which is uh, DC current or AC current and they convert it to DC current. So I can show you really quickly right here. Um, the uh, power normally comes in like this and that's, a, that's an AC wave, sine wave, and we want the power to, to flow in a straight line um, which is DC. So the AC, uh, basically, if you look at it, it means that if the current's flowing in one direction, then it switches and flows in the other. So it's going like this. And so we want to convert it to DC. So those four diodes, these four guys right here, convert it to DC by basically flipping the wave over like this. And then, um, and so the, the power only flows in one direction, which is a, it's a key aspect there. Okay, um, so let's look at some of the other components. We have this resistor right here. This resistor helps the uh, the board um, in current sensing, and uh, then we have these two capacitors here, and they are they're basically uh, part of an electromagnetic interference filter, and they help to clean up the the, the voltage for that for that purpose. Uh, this is the transformer. The transformer is a high frequency transformer. In order for a transformer to function. It has to. There has to be a change in the voltage. So, basically, the way we make a uh, change in the voltage is we do what's called pulse width modulation. So, um, the voltage is going to be uh, coming out like this, and then uh, it's creating a square wave. What's called a square wave. So this is direct current, DC, um, but it's being so. This is 100% power, and this is zero. So it's being switched on and off very fast. And that, that turning on and off um, allows for uh, the induction to happen, which, which occurs inside of, of this transformer here. So um, the transformer steps the voltage down from 120 volts to both 12 volts and 5 volts. And that pulse width modulation, or that square wave, is being regulated by this chip right here. This is the IC chip that controls the PWM, or pulse width modulation. You can see there are a number of resistors here. They're to protect the uh, circuitry on the IC chip, most likely. Um, we've got some diodes as well. Those control the flow of, of current. The optoisolator is used to sample output voltage and regulate it during different, uh, basically different load conditions. Um, and this guy right here, it looks like a transistor, but it, but it is actually a, a shunt regulator, which basically uh, functions like a zener diode uh, or a variable zener diode uh, and a zener diode is uh, allows current to flow in one direction to a certain point and then above a certain point it allows current to flow in both directions so this sort of functions like a variable uh, zener diode and I wanted to say thank you to uh, Doom2Pro 
who pro provided some awesome feedback on the first video and uh, taught me a lot about how uh, regulated power supplies or switch mode power supplies can work.